It's another edition of the Victor Marks Show. We got our CEO, Jeff Teagues, with us today. And our special guest is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Pete Doc Chambers. Uh, this is interesting with your long history in the military. Uh, I, I like this phrase. After his first honorable discharge, then he went to work, attended medical school, completed residency, became an emergency medicine physician. Uh, but then 9-11 happened, and he returned to the Army, went SF. Yeah, yeah, changed everything for him. Yeah, yeah it did. Uh, that patriotic heart, yeah, went for it. Uh, so you're in your Green Beret? Yes, sir. And uh, what group were you with? Third group. 19th group as well. I started with 19th, and then uh, we weren't busy, so I went to the commander and said, I want to go active duty, and I ended up getting busy. Third group was busy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Where, where are some of the places you spent time out? 56 different countries in total, but cool. uh, the main ones that we talk about is Afghanistan, Iraq, yeah. Syria, Jordan. Uh, throughout the Middle East, other countries, different operations that are privy to uh, what we can talk about or can't talk about. Yeah. I want to back up one. How did you eke out an honorable discharge from that first one? <laughs> <laughs> you know the good conduct medal means, right? <laughs> you didn't get caught. <laughs> right? All right, we can continue. Right. I, I, I was enlisted. I was a little confused. You were enlisted too, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. same deal. 11 Bravo. Yeah. Okay, infantry. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, during your time of service, you did get wounded. You were awarded per bar. Yes, sir. And uh, I know I speak on behalf of everybody. We always appreciate those who put on the line. And uh, glad that you're here with us today. It's good to be here. Yeah. So, Colonel, what are we going to talk about? Doc, we're going to talk about Doc. I'm confused on how you and I have been running around in these same circles, but this is the first time we've met face to face. Well, probably because I'm more gray than you are. A little bit more gray. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. It, you know, it's uh, I've met guys like that. You always have. You always have. I can say a name right now, which we won't. Yeah, and you don't. Yeah, and same thing. It's, yeah. it's always that with us. Yeah. Mickey Mouse. Oh, <laughs> well, sir. Uh, I met him down there at Disney. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> known too. <laughs> well, it's um, yeah, it is interesting uh, to to talk story. We got going last night on some hilarious. Uh, just combat stories mm -hmm. that you know right. got to be able to laugh at, and uh, but so tell us that I know our audience, many are Christians on on this program. A lot are not, but conservative, solid people, and then we got a few heathen that follow us, which I'm so grateful for. Love my heathen people. <laughs> Keep following us, and uh, but how how does somebody like you, wild man character? I mean, you pull up here at the training center, truck, pull a trailer, and uh, your dog. Mm -hmm. Joe. Yeah. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. It's a good-looking dog, too. Yeah. Sm smart. They are. Um, how do somebody like you come to faith? <laughs> when I quit being myself and giving it up, honestly, mm. straight up, uh, trying to you know control everything. You, when you're a type A, and I guess I may be in that category, um, you tend to think you got control over everything. Mm. Then you realize after you go to a few little things, and I was never in combat before as an enlisted guy. I was mm. in the 80s and under Ronald Reagan, actually. It was my guess. time. Great. Yep. Uh, you, uh, there's, there's a long story, and, it, and it, <laughs> there's a girl involved, and there's a fast car, and there's a, <laughs> the lookout mountain. And, uh, and at that point, I'm going to make it short now. We were not on date. I was on my way to Murfreesboro to meet this girl. But I'm driving along, and I'm. this is before 9-11, and I said, and I was going to be a cosmetic surgeon. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. I make a lot of money. Cos cosmetologist? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next, <people>. next step. <laughs> Fixing people make them look pretty. Make but, them look pretty. Uh, yeah, I mentioned that earlier. This Clearly, day, he hasn't done any work on himself. Yeah, well, no. no. <laughs> physician. Yeah, Heal that's myself. Right. Heal thyself. <laughs> okay, I want another car. Uh, it was a Viper. Nice. No. Yeah, I've got it, like, totally pinned out, right? Okay. Coming across Lookout Mountain, I got the world going on. I'm dating this girl, and I got this one down here at this restaurant. I got this one over here. I'm going to see another one in Murfreesboro. And there was something missing. And I'm not a drinker, and I'm not a drugger. I never have been. Yeah. But it, that was my drug. It's just self. Yeah. Image. All this. Interesting. Stuff. And I said, you know what? There's something wrong. I pulled over, and I just, I knew about God. I knew about God, but he didn't really, I didn't know I had a relationship. Or, mm. You know, so... Hadn't come to that faith. And uh, I just pulled over and I was just bummed. I mean, there's something wrong. I already been through a divorce. Mm. Two little girls that, you know, grew up away from me. And I just said, what is it that's missing, Lord? You know, what is it? And he just told me, he's like, 
you're an idiot. You need to go back in the army where you belong. Mm. Now, that was what the message I got. So I'm like, well, quit residency. Okay, so this is before 9-11, mm. right? So I go back into the military. I quit the residency program. I go into primary care, which is emergency medicine and family practice down in Beaumont, Texas. Oh, yeah. I had no Beaumont. And the way well. I found that book was, I, did, I mean, found that place was I opened up a book of residencies and I went like this. I just closed my eyes, man. Because I'm a, I'm a person of just like the wind. Right. If anybody tell you about Doc, it'll be like, you don't know what he's going to do tomorrow because it depends on which wind, wind's blowing. <laughs> That's a ranching thing. And I'm not a yeah. rancher. I'm a hand. Okay, let's just cl- clarify that. I might look like a rancher. I raise some longhorns because it keeps the tax men off my back. Yeah. All right, but I grew up in cattle country. So I'm, I'm in there. Uh, pick this residence program. I'm going to Beaumont. I load up my F-150, F-350. Got rid of the Viper. I was leasing it anyway. It wasn't really mine. <laughs> it looked good. You know, you <laughs> your hair going. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and then I just ended up in Beaumont, Texas, and I'm living in a trailer. You know, I went down there, got rid of the – I had a horse ranch, and I got rid of it and uh, ended up uh, just doing primary care stuff. Hmm. And then I was wanting to date a girl, and she said, let's go to church. So I go to church. I'm sitting in the back, and this invitation comes up, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, what is this? Hmm. You know, I mean, this is – I'll say the name. Can I say the name of the church? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Paul Vick. Paul Vick, if you're listening. Uh, saved – my life, this this life, but you know God did it. But he he got me there. I'd always had that seed planted all along. People asked me to go to church. I'm like, no, I got guns. I don't need church. Right. I'm, I got all this. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm good. Paul Vic, he's sitting there preaching. He's a big dude like you, and he's up there, and he's just you know, and he's got this guy that looks like Elvis playing the bongos. It's <laughs> Berean Baptist Church, but it's more like a Pentecostal. Yeah. Uh. And they're just getting after it. I'm like, this is some crazy stuff. <laughs> but then he preaches a message of salvation. And this is mm. the first time I've ever listened to it. Mm. My dad was from Greece. I went to the Greek Orthodox Church as a kid. Wow. I didn't know what they were saying. Mm. So I'm going to do my cross, and I'm going to listen to it, smell the incense. And you know, I learned more about it since then. And I figured out it was the way that worked for me. But uh, at that time, Paul Vick just said something, and the Holy Spirit said something, and said, get up front. So I'm laying up front. That girl, she opens her eyes. She looks up. I'm up front. She thought I left. And then I got saved mm. right now. We use that word too loosely, I think. Right, right, right. You know, I believe that. So what is that? Well, that is me going to Promise Keepers. That's me going, doing a lot of things, trying to do, do, do. I'm going to help out at church. I'm going to do all this stuff. And I figured out, hmm, this isn't working either because mm. I'm still the same person deep down inside. And then 9-11 happened. So I go back on a, a, to 19th group, and, you know, they needed a doc, and they took me because I was a SWAT team doctor at the time working for a sheriff's office. Okay. And uh, that's how I ended up coming to the, to the deal there. But, uh, and that's just part of the road. <laughs> well, it's, it's a journey. I love hearing faith journeys, right, and uh, especially warriors, mm-hmm. uh, because especially today in America, there's a real sense of uh, acceptable passivity, in Christianity mm-hmm. among men. Manhood and masculinity isn't isn't appreciated like it used to be. No. And uh it's fellows like you that can help uh I think orient these young men as an example. Uh not just a role model but a real model, right? And and um uh, I, I thank God when he gets a hold of us. And the, I was thinking about this today. Uh, people want if you're a Christian trying to please in the highest level of what you want to be like is to appear to other Christians as kind of righteous and holy man you, you, you're missing it you're, and there's so many people that's that's the height of their what they want to do. If I can get the you know affirmation from other Christians that I'm okay and then I'm whole, it's like what 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 in the world? If I would have stayed in that, you know, gosh, three decades ago, if I would have stayed in that because I was in a little bit going like you know how am I doing? I I would have never been able to accomplish what we've seen by the Lord saying just be you, Victor, mm-hmm. just be you, yeah. like all of us, and. Um, America's in dire need of that right now. We need we need authenticity, but it's not just the word. Once again, saved, authenticity, uh, soldier. Those are just words. But really, you know, it was Her- Heraclitus that said this, 480 B.C., yeah. Spartans. Yeah. You know this one, right? Oh, yeah. Out of 100 soldiers, 
10 shouldn't even be here. Mm. 80 are nothing but targets. Mm. 80. Mm. Targets. Pretty harsh. Nine of them, they the battle make. They're warriors. But the one is a leader, and he'll bring the others back. That's the truth in church. That's the truth in the Army today. From 1983, for me, on, I had a break in service, but I came back. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. There's only about 10 of us that are actually doing anything. Agreed. I, you know, I got in trouble a while back, which is good trouble. I don't mind hurting people's feelings if it if it can affect change. But, I, you know, I made this public deal to pastors, and I just said, look, just because you're a pastor and you have the ability to teach the Bible, it doesn't mean you're a leader of men. It doesn't. Look around. You know, if you want a solid team, look who has a gift of leading men and put him in charge and stick to what you versus these guys. You know, I've seen, I, I saw a video recently of a men's deal where the guy's calling all men to come and eat pancakes. And I was just like, a good time. And, <laughs> and he was like, and it's only $10. And he said it with not a hint of masculinity. And I just thought, $10 yeah, but, pancakes? Yeah. And to this, become a man. That's to, it. This is the, I mean, this was it. I, just, group. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, now look, I I, I appreciate flapjacks as much as anybody, but the way this was presented, I was just like, and that's it. There's no, let's go shoot, let's go do something, yeah, be a man. Yeah, no. So, yeah, we're 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 in dire need. And if and if our country, if our nation's going to get turned around uh, on issues that matter. To us, men must step up. I, I got a question for you, Doc. You know, one of these things, we, we only have one life to live, right? You have to make these decisions. Mm-hmm. And it, it's always fascinated me to be involved in med- medicine and surgery and mm-hmm. inside the human body. So I'm curious, through your career, how you've seen mm-hmm. the spark of the divine with, with, with what you do. Saving lives, losing lives, being up to your elbows inside somebody's body right. and just really feeling... The structure, the creator, the the divine, and some of that. Can you can you share some of that? Yeah, I definitely have two different uh, points of view on that. One of them is as a secular side, and then there's a then there's my Christian side. And you know, um, from the secular side, is you believe as a doctor that you are God, small G. All right, sometimes, mm-hmm. not all docs, but a lot of them. Yeah. I've been around them. That's why I don't hang out with too many. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can save them, or you cannot save them. I'm going to tell you that from the other side is that there's nothing that I can do to save them or save them if they're going to die or live. Mm. I can only intervene. And that, 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 that ability is given to me by God. But you know, now I'm going to be doing it with one hand for a while. But, uh, but, it, but it truly is. Uh, there are just throughout my career, there are places where I've seen prayer mm. heal. There was places where you heal with a word mm-hmm. sometimes. Because the mind is a huge, huge organ. Right? <laughs> And it creates uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone, cortisol, all these big words, right? But all that ultimately turns around and does is either make you afraid or not afraid. Two ways, one or the other. We don't live in a spirit of fear. So when you live in a spirit of fear, like what's going on right now in this country with the masks and this and that, thank goodness for Texas that said, no, we're not going to, yeah. you know. Mississippi just happened. followed. And they followed. And there are some other states that have already done that. But... We don't live in a spirit of fear. I refuse to live in a spirit of fear. I've been in fear. You've been in fear, right? You've been in fear. Yeah. Like where you thought you were going to die. I got a tattoo on this arm right here. I could show you Psalm 91 verse 2 mm-hmm. in German where I said, Lord, get me out. This is in a bad place. And I'm laying there. I'm like thinking I'm going to die this very moment. Mm-hmm. And I will talk about you every single day of my life. <laughs> she made that. You had that conversation. I did. <laughs> and then I put it on there because I came back through, through Germany. And I uh, spent some time there, and uh, it's in German. So when now people see it, they don't think it's a Christian thing. They're like, what is that? That's cool. That's German. That must be some kind of Nazi swastika stuff. Yeah, open like, the door. No, it's mein Zuberis, mein Berg, mein Gott auf die Psalm 91, verse 2. You know, that's it. So it's just that, it's just that, that opens the door for conversation. So the thing that I see, the, the difference is in medicine, is that prayer matters, is that a touch matters. Looking somebody in the, eye, in the eye matters. Not like this doctor that took care of me at yeah. the VA. Mm-hmm. What's your problem, doc? Maybe he didn't call me doc because he didn't know I was a doctor, but he treated me like crap. Yeah. You know, unfortunately. 
And I, I go through the VA like anybody else. I can go pay for it. I can go do whatever. I could do that. But I go through it because I'm a soldier and that's what I do. Mm. All right. And I just, I identify problems and I go fix them. You know, I go to Congress people and knock on their door and say, hey, this guy in the VA down there in Dallas, he's screwed in the head. Mm. Oh, well, I well, better fix that. Do you have to edit that? I just said screwed. No. We, okay. We, I just want to make sure. We, I don't we, usually cuss. Yeah. That's the extent of my cussing. We're, we're good. <laughs> okay. But, uh, that's how I see it. Okay, so there's there's these these moments of clarity, vision where I see and I go, wow, somebody's supposed to die. Like I'm thinking they're going to die, and all of a sudden I'm getting a heartbeat back. This particular kid downrange, RPG comes through the back door of the MRAP, blows up two guys in the back. He's in the next seat over. He gets shrapnel, but it comes up underneath his diaphragm. So they're looking at his chest, thinking, why is he not breathing? He just got shrapnel on his legs, but he's not breathing. It's because it's full of blood and air inside of his chest cavity. Mm. So he needs a needle uh, for some thesis or a needle right here in the, uh, not a, not a Pulp Fiction needle, right? Right. but a needle right here just to get the air out. But that wasn't enough because there's blood. So they, they do that. That's not happening. But I show up, run up. Okay. What are we going to do? I open his chest. And as soon as I do it, I'm thinking he's dead. He's, mm. he's DRT. He's not. The blood comes out. The air comes out. There was something that said, you know, to me in the States, I would never do that. I'm not authorized to do that in the emergency room here, you know, unless you're under those conditions, surgical conditions, but downrange, I'll take the chance. So the Lord guided me and said, hey, make the decision now. Observe, orient, decide, act. I acted. That's the OODA loop. And then there I am on the X. And what happens? His heart starts. Mm. And I get a card from his family every year saying, hey, thanks for sending dad home at Christmas. Oh, man. Now that's all the medals and stuff that we have in our cabinets or whatever. Mine's in a, in a cigar box. Uh, I have one thing that sits on my cabinet. It's that Christmas card. Mm. It says, thanks for sending dad home. Mm. That's powerful. <laughs> That's powerful. That's real. <laughs> you know, it's uh, we talk, we talk about this, the divine, you know, the power of God, and I, I think about a lot. Of, and you said it earlier. You made mention about we, we use the term "saved" a lot, and or I, even the term "Christian" these days. Mm-hmm. There's so many people. Club. It is. It's like this cultural Christians. And then, you know, I've gone back to going, well, you know, who's a disciple? Disciples. Those are the those are people that said, no, we're in it. We're in it to win it. And we're okay with dying. Mm-hmm. I'm, I tend to be more, more better, comfortable around people who are willing to die for what they believe. When we've gone over to Iraq, we, we were on a call this morning. We were on comms this morning with we, uh, but people ask me, you know, they're like, uh, you know, are you preaching the gospel? Are you? I said, well, I'm kind of reduced to living it over there. Hmm. You know, they already know I'm a Christian. I'm a white guy from America, and. The, the thing that was consistent, and I wish it would happen more here, uh, but because persecution is so real over there, they would ask, you know, why are you here? What are you, what are you doing here? Like even in really exciting moments, yeah. we're getting shot at. And, all, and I go, well, God loves me. I love y'all. He sent us here. We're here to help. And and one time I remember so powerful, Dave Eubank, you're familiar with David if, if, uh, Free Burma Rangers yeah. we were in Sinjar and ISIS wasn't far and they, we were taking and coming all the time 24-7 it's just a matter of you know but we were inside of a bunker and uh, uh, Dave was on his computer doing that a little action report and the point person the commander uh, Peshmerga steps into the bunker right in there he sees Dave on the computer and he goes what are you doing he goes, I'm just, just writing a report about what I'm seeing. And then Dave just goes, <sighs> he goes, I, and he started crying. And this commander's looking at him like, what's going on? And Dave said, I feel y'all's pain and suffering. I feel it. And I'll never forget this guy drops, drops to his knees, even fighting ISIS. Every day, I mean, nobody. He just drops his knees and he started crying too. And he said, no one understands our pain. We're here by ourselves. The world doesn't know what we're going through. That right there was such a powerful witness mm-hmm. for someone to go, why, why are y'all here? Mm-hmm. 
And when you're willing to die for what you believe, it, it lends a lot of credibility to the faith that you believe. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping Americans here spark up a bit and, and stop being, uh, like, stop receiving Jesus and, and start following him. That's what he said. Hey, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. You talk about your tattoo uh, in German. The first book I ever read was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Really? That was the first book somebody <laughs> gave me. He wrote a comic book? Well, <laughs> yeah. It's light reading. That's what I'll say. Uh, he, he doesn't put a lot of thought in it. Just scribbling his thoughts from prison. Yeah. Uh, for trying to help take out Hitler. But, you know, that was the first, I think somebody realized, recognized you. This may be for you. So we've kind of lived that way. Um, but you talk about that that moment of thinking you're going to die. We've had a few of them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had any? Not really. You know, I think the, I'm, I haven't been wounded, mm -hmm. so I haven't had that personal piece but even when when things seemed dire mm -hmm. you know we always hold on to that little sliver of hope that oh, we're gonna get out of this okay mm -hmm. so of uh you know no matter how it's been i've never i've never really felt that way that that it was over for me but you are a freak of nature you're True. delta machine five bronze stars and a silver come on man i've talked to i've talked to a guy that said yeah he should be wearing the medal of honor I, I don't know who that guy is. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and, and but I think it's interesting because I, it's one of those things where I, I'm always trying to consider, like, how much of us were born this way, mm -hmm. you know, and then developed. You make a series of choices throughout your life, and I'm I'm eternally grateful to the men and women that poured into me. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple a couple years ago, I, I actually call I actually talked to you. I, I went back to Fort Benning and was just visiting. Oh, we were down there um, talking at church with uh, yeah. Anthony Randall, who hopefully will be on here on the radio show, yeah. radio show shortly. And I, I hadn't been back to Benning in a while. You know, I went mm -hmm. back to where I did basic training yeah. and airborne school and sniper school and ranger school. And, right. you know, I just wanted to thank all those men and women that mm -hmm. created a soldier. You know, like, just like you, back oh, in 83, yeah. you know, I, I came in in 87, their job was to create a soldier who could succeed on the battlefield. They did. And they did. Mm -hmm. And it really, it kind of dawned on me. How, how many years later is that? It's thir 30 years later, it dawns on me like, hey, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. What you set out to do helped help me survive and, and, and help me keep keep other men alive and well, continue to press, press the enemy. So it was, a, One of the it was an emotional yeah. event that I was not expecting. And, you know, I had my epiphany, or not epiphany, what do you call it, my hodge back to, uh, yeah. to Benning. And uh, <laughs> you like that? Uh, he went back to Mecca. Yeah, back to Mecca, back to Fort Beginning. So I'm down there, and I, I find out that my old lieutenant, when 85, we were in Korea, uh, the infantry guys, you know, my lieutenant, who was a, a West Pointer, uh, Jeffrey Terhune, he's out now, great guy, uh, salt of the earth, good Solid, and I'm going to use the word Christian, but he's a believer, and he's he he tried to get me to go to church way back then in '85. Yeah. I wouldn't go, I'm like yeah, I, sir, I you know, I got to go surfing, you know, because we went back to Hawaii, and I'm like, I'm going to go surfing, you know. But uh, he was then an 06, so he's a bird colonel. He's at Benning, and he's working in the CG's office as an adjutant or something like mm -hmm. that down the hallway. And uh, I, I found out where he was. This is before cell phones, so I go back in there, and I'm like, I'm a captain now, newly minted captain with a medical symbol on my sleeve here. And I'm back there doing uh, uh, like a reserve refresh for airborne because it's been a while. And he knows you as what? An old spec four or something? I was an OD four. That <laughs> yeah. from, I was a scout, you know, an infantry scout, you know, yeah. so I, and I manned a 60, you know, on the Jeep because we, we drove around the M1518 deuces. Yeah, the yeah. Jeep, so, I remember right? those. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that was like, you know, riding it like rat patrol. Yeah, exactly. Was like, my job was great. So I didn't have to worry about driving or nothing. So, uh, we get out there, I get out there, and, and I find out where he is, and he's, he's down the hall, Captain, going in there, and so I just, I just walk in, and I put my feet on his desk, and I start doing push-ups, because that's how he used to have me report, yeah. so, <laughs> Lieutenant, and he's like, excuse me, and I'm like, oh, hey, sir, uh, and I pop up, and he's like, Chambers, what are you doing? I'm like, well, you know what, remember when you told me back in the day when I was enlisted that I could go to college and be smart, because I didn't think I was smart, I was wow. an infantry guy that grew up, you know, on a horse ranch, I mean, yeah. I'm just a dummy, yep. you know. 
Well, I stayed in I stayed in school and I'd done this thing. I kept reading all my books and I became a doctor. And he's like, that's great. And he got a tear in his eye, came over and hugged me. I mean, he's like, but that's so great to give that back to those people because it's like, and I know there's probably people that I may or may not inspire. Sometimes I don't, but uh, I'm inspired to, you know, move faster. But you put a word in their head, and yeah. then 20 years later, they show up again and say, hey, I'm a doctor because you said I'd go to school. <sighs> it was 20 years. Ago. Powerful. Yeah. And so now we still stay in contact. We got this cool thing called the, the uh, interwebs, you know, so we can talk to each other, right? Because I didn't grow up with that stuff, you know. But, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool to give back to that. And that's, that goes to your point. And, you know? and that's where I think um, we don't talk about it enough with people that are coming out of service. I, I, I don't feel any less a Green Beret today than I did five, six years ago. I, I just don't, I don't have a commander. I don't have the bureaucracy, mm-hmm. but the, but the yeah. mission and the intent is to empower oh. people and free the oppressed and help, help people survive and thrive that, that continues on. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we share that as well. Mm-hmm. That service doesn't end when you take off that, Ever. that green uniform. This is like they say in the Marine Corps, people go, Oh, you're an ex Marine. Go, no, what's Marine always Marine. It, 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 there are people listening right now young men, uh, maybe moms of young boys that are saying, help us. You, you, you know, there's all this testosterone around this table, all this experience. Uh, how can my, how can I as a young man become a masculine, courageous, or whether they ever go in the military or not? And you know what? I think we have some answers for them, and I want us to hang around for tomorrow's broadcast. Would you do that? For tomorrow's? Yeah. Why not? We're going to roll again. <laughs> Look, I got a trailer out there. I don't need a Motel 6. <laughs> See? <laughs> so you know what? Hey, we're going to call it on this one. But if you're listening or watching, you want to stay tuned. Come back. Check out the next episode because we're going to give you practical insight and wisdom on how you as a person can make the right decisions uh, for your journey to become the best man best warrior that you can be that our country needs that your future wife your current wife uh and our nation needs and ultimately this world for the glory of god i want to thank my guest jeff teagues our operations guy for all things possible and doc chambers and uh we are excited to come back tomorrow so whatever you're doing whatever lane you're in stay the course and get her done